In this video, my Bruski and I are going to change a water pump in a 2012 Toyota Sienna with two young university graduates with at least 10 hours of experience working with automotive machines doing basic maintenance. So I, I guess the odds are in our favor. <laughs> to prepare for this, I have watched some videos. I'll link to them below because they'll go into much more details than I am capable of. So without any further ado, let's get to choring. We started off with jacking up the front passenger side of the vehicle, sliding a jack stand underneath it, removing the tire and removing the wheel hub cover to increase the visibility and the accessibility to the water pump. Then we jacked up the engine slightly to relieve some pressure from the engine bracket on the top. This was done by jacking the engine from the oil pan and placing a 2x4 in between the oil pan and the jack to not damage the oil pan. Next, we undid the engine bracket nut near the front passenger side wheel. This allowed us to raise the engine high enough to a point that allowed us to remove the top engine bracket, which is in the way of getting the water pump out. Then we took off the top engine bracket by undoing multiple 14mm bolts. Now it's time to remove the thermostat housing, but before doing so, we decided it was a good idea to empty out the radiator to minimize the amount of coolant pouring out as we undid some coolant hoses. The thermostat housing was held by three bolts, two rubber hoses and one metal hose. To get the two rubber hoses off, you will most likely need a needle nose plier. Then we removed the belt and a couple of the circular wheel bearing things that moved with the belt. And then we were finally able to get to the water pump. It was held on with two different types of bolts. Be sure to keep track of where each bolt comes from. Once the old water pump was off, we cleaned the area where the gasket would go, placed the new gasket and the new water pump to its respective position and bolted them on. We made sure to apply thread sealer to the bolts because we realized the bolts had thread sealer on it from the previous installation when we took it out. Then it was time to attach the wheel bearing attachment from the old pump to the new pump. We applied anti-seize to them because we were quite certain it will experience a great amount of vibration in the engine bay. Then we bolted the circular wheel things and placed the belt back on. Next, we attached the thermostat housing and the hoses back on then attach the top engine bracket and the bottom engine bracket back on. Then we gave back the coolant we robbed from the radiator and added more coolant to it because a lot of coolant spilled out when we removed the water pump. And now you can finally witness the finale. You hear that? It sounds like we just saved 600 folks. Next we bled the radiator and took it for a test drive and ran the heater. After 10 minutes of driving, the engine temperature reached its medium and stayed there and the heater worked as well. Next day, I went to see if there were any coolant leaks and I was not able to find any under the minivan. So I guess now we can pat ourselves on the back and call ourselves big boys. Well, that's it for the video. This project is the biggest project I think either one of us has ever done on a vehicle. Which is why I'm surprised the vehicle still works. I'm extremely glad we tried to fix it ourselves because the professionals quoted us $850, including the parts, and we spent $250 for the parts and the initial diagnostic. Thus, the owner of the vehicle saved about 600 bucks and we gained the confidence of working with our fingies. So I'll end the video here. If you like the video, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. With that said, have a good one.